Over the next couple weeks, or most likely months, or however long it's going to be, I'm going to be putting together a playlist of sort of the building blocks you need to get started to investing into the stock market and these kind of things. Just going over basic terms and things like that, and eventually going into how to value companies more properly and getting more and more in depth as I cover the basics, move on kind of the novice stuff, more advanced stuff, goes on kind of like that. In today's video, we're going to be going over the P.E. ratio, since that's something that's very basic and is kind of like the first thing that's kind of noticed when you look at a stock, other than the price, of course. Hey, my name is Dr. Kress, and welcome to my channel, where I detail my investing journey as a 14-year-old and give my thoughts and opinions on a variety of personal finance-related topics and issues. In today's video, I'm just going to be going over the P.E. ratio, kind of what it is, how to calculate it, what it can be used for, etc., etc. So, let's get into it. The main way to use the P.E. ratio is mainly as a comparison metric, whether that's to that own company's history, or to competitors, or to the market in general. There's basically compared to just literally anything, but it's essentially useless on your own. You can't just look at a company and say, oh, this has a PE ratio of 13 and not do anything else with it. Because when you just look at that, that doesn't tell you pretty much anything. All you know is you're paying 13 times earnings, but you don't know if that's a good or bad. There are two types of P.E. ratios. That is the trailing P.E. ratio and the four P.E. ratio. You can use them in both different situations or likely you want to use them both when you are looking at a company. Four P.E. ratios are generally better though for a company that's expected to grow a lot in the future because right now they might look very expensive. Let's say P.E. ratio of 80, which is generally going to be very high. And then in the future, it might be, oh, it's only going to be 40, which is about in line with the S&P 500 because the company itself is expected to grow a whole lot. Although, because there are a few factors in P.E. ratios, the P.E. can actually be affected by a couple different things, whether that's growth in the company or share buybacks or putting out new shares. There's a lot of different ways that it can be done and changed. So let's finally get into how do you calculate the P.E. ratio? To calculate trailing P.E. ratio, you take today's share price divided by earnings per share. Earnings per share is the total earnings of the company divided by shares outstanding, but you don't really have to worry about that because you can always find earnings per share. It'll usually be listed in the company's most recent financial annual report or quarterly report, as well as on places like Yahoo Finance. To get the four P.E. ratio, it's pretty much the same thing. You take today's price and divide it by the projected future earnings per share. Because it's obviously projected earnings per share, this one isn't concrete and is a, more of an estimate compared to the trailing P.E. ratio. If the earnings per share is negative, then the P.E. ratio is pretty much non-existent and technically astronomically high since you're not even getting any earnings for the price you're paying. So if you're buying a company with a negative EPS, make sure that they're going to be profitable again in the future. That's why, again, P.E. ratio isn't too good on its own. You need to combine it with other things. But now let's very quickly get into a quick example of how you could use this. In this example, I'm going to be using PepsiCo and Coca-Cola. So right now, the year trailing P.E. ratios are 30.18 for Coca-Cola and 26.8 for PepsiCo. So at this moment, might look, OK, maybe Pepsi is undervalued in comparison to Coke. Maybe Pepsi is a buy and we can look into that more. Keyword, look into that more. You can't just buy off this. But then you can also look at at the forward P.E. ratio and you'll see, oh, it actually evens out quite a bit. Coca-Cola's goes down to 23.18 and Pepsi's goes down to 22.07. But now you then want to look, okay, why is it evening out? Why is the P.E. ratio getting closer together? Well, this all these numbers are being pulled off Yahoo Finance, by the way. Coca-Cola, their forward earnings per share is $2.33, whereas right now it's $1.79. So you can see, okay, it's expected that this company is going to increase its earnings in the future. And that's why its price to earnings ratio is decreasing because their earnings are going up compared to today's price. So you then want to combine this with the forward price to earnings ratio. And this can give you the target price when you take your future earnings per share times your forward PE ratio, and that will give you the target price. So when you multiply 2.33 times 23.18, that gives you $54.01. For comparison, Coca-Cola is trading at $54 right now. So initially that doesn't look good, but that also doesn't take into account for things like share buybacks and a whole bunch of other complicated stuff. Along with a multitude of other important things, whether that's free cash flow or the dividend, etc., etc., that's why you need something like discount free cash flow. 
So let's quickly just recap all of what I've went over and get to the outro. So basically the PE ratio can be used to compare some stocks or a stock to the general market, and you can use its forward estimated price to earnings ratio and earning per share to determine a forward slash future target price that you have for this stock and a multitude of different things, but it can always be used with or should always be used with other metrics and not on its own because it is far too simple and doesn't take enough things into account on its own. So if you thought this video was informative and helpful, as well as all that kind of thing, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, smash that like button as well. But if you also have some feedback on this video, what I can improve to do to change it, all that kind of thing, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you want to see more videos, that's on screen now. I will see you next time.